What is going on, everybody? What is going on? The Catch Fam. My name is John Dawson, and in today's video, we are hopping into our week nine must start wide receivers for the 2022 fantasy football season. If you guys do enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you're new to the channel, it really does help us out. If you guys hit that like and consider subscribing and please feel free to drop any comments questions concerns pertaining to the 2022 fantasy football season down below i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can without further ado let's hop into today's video all right so here are my top 12 wide receivers as we approach week nine obviously if you own any of these receivers you're starting them over some of the receivers that we're going over today and there's going to be a couple of these receivers in the top 12 but if you own a guy like Tyreek Hill against the Chicago Bears this week, you're absolutely starting him over some of the receivers we're going to go over today. So just want to make sure I clarify that. I know Cooper Cup's got an injury right now. I know Stephon Diggs has a rough matchup going against Sauce Gardner. It's going to be a really fun matchup to watch. But overall, these are my top receivers as we approach the week. Also, at the time I'm recording this, T. Higgins has not played Monday Night Football yet. So there is a possibility that he kind of moves up on the list maybe a couple spots but overall i'm hitting some of these receivers just played absolutely crazy in week eight deandre hopkins is absolutely balling out right now aj brown had one of the most monster days we've seen all season from the wide receiver position definitely a lot of good options if you own some of these top receivers as we move into week nine but keep in mind there are a lot of you guys who are dealing with a lot of talented receivers on Bye weeks, there's also some defenses on bye week this week that we like to kind of, you know, try and exploit in terms of matchups. But overall, here are your top 12 wide receivers. Let's hop into the must start receivers for week nine. All right, first up on the list, we got Chris Alave going against the Baltimore Ravens in week nine. It's a very good matchup. The Ravens are in the bottom 20 against the wide receiver position from a fantasy perspective. And this Saints team has kind of been humming. I know they're not always winning football games, but they're definitely creating competitive offensive game scripts, which ultimately is going to benefit Chris Olave, who has 110% solidified himself as the top receiving option for the New Orleans Saints. He's averaging just under 15 fantasy points per game and full PPR at the moment he's getting a plethora of targets on a weekly basis. I love Chris Olave. I think he's a very solid wide receiver too. And an even more solid flex option as we move into week nine. All right, next up on the list, we've got the Seattle Seahawks primary receivers and DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett squaring up against the Arizona Cardinals who have played pretty decently against the wide receiver position on the season, but they're also just allowing for good game scripts we saw that last week with the vikings and we saw it the week before with the saints so i like this matchup for a seahawks team that is definitely keeping game after game competitive especially from the offensive side of things so metcalf a little bit of risk going into week eight with the injury but he suited up he played he had 17 and a half fantasy points in full ppr six receptions 55 receiving yards and a touchdown lock it on the other hand in week eight 15.3 fantasy points five receptions and a touchdown as well as 63 receiving yards so i still like both of these receivers I think they're very very solid wide receiver two and flex options as we approach week nine all right next up we've got mike evans and chris godwin squaring up against the rams listen guys mike evans comes in as your wide receiver 10 on the season he's been very very consistent and that's with him missing week three so i like mike evans on a weekly basis i think most owners of mike evans like him as well but i've got enough questions about you know rosters that own a tampa bay wide receiver and if they should be a starter for you on a weekly basis that i really just want to solidify confidence especially in mike evans and then also when you think about the rams you know it's kind of natural to think oh that's not a good match because jalen ramsey is somewhere out there and while that's true and while ramsey will square up with Evans at times and Godwin at times in this matchup. The rest of the secondary for the Rams has not been playing well this season. They just gave up a ton of points to Brandon Ayuk, who's essentially the wide receiver one all afternoon, except for a little bit of CMC action and a little bit of George Kittle action. So I have no doubt in my mind that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin will come out with 
very solid stat lines, especially in full PPR. Now, listen, Mike Evans is a receiver on this team who brings a little bit more upside. Well, Chris Godwin just brings a safe floor on a weekly basis. He still has not scored on the year. Hopefully, we start to see a little bit more action out of Godwin in the end zone. But overall, he's a very safe start. I think Mike Evans brings a nice ceiling as we move in to week nine. All right, on last week's must start players heading into the weekend, I had DJ Moore. I said, call me crazy, but I really think Moore is going to have another good performance in week eight. He had 19.6 fantasy points in week seven. In week eight, he had an even better fantasy performance against the Atlanta Falcons. 27 and a half fantasy points, six receptions, 152 receiving yards, and a touchdown in week eight for DJ Moore in an absolutely clutch touchdown to keep the Panthers in the game with the Falcons and just I made mean, a really good catch on a Hail Mary overall. Regardless, a little bit of a tougher matchup against the Bengals this week, but at the end of the day, this Panthers team is really fighting for respect within this league. And overall, I mean, this division is still up in the air. And the Panthers, I mean, they don't look awful with PJ Walker at quarterback, Dante Foreman at the running back position. I mean, they're trying to get it done, and this offense is going to run through. DJ Moore as the primary target overall. So I think that DJ Moore is a safe lock for 10 plus targets and he will make the most of it by the end of the fourth quarter. I definitely feel like this is going to be a game script where the Bengals will be up relatively early and the Panthers will have to be throwing the football. So I think DJ Moore is a lock once again, moving into week nine for a very safe stat line and a stat line that could include some nice upside. All right, next up, we've got Terry McLaurin against the Vikings. Once again, the Vikings have played okay at times against opposing receivers on the season, but this is just a team that allows for good game scripts. That's what we want to try and look for, especially on weeks like we have in week nine, where a lot of teams are on by week. And overall, Terry McLaurin has really stepped up in terms of production with Taylor Heineke, his old buddy, at the quarterback position. 18.3 fantasy points in week seven, 16.6 in week eight. And what Heineke allows McLaurin to do is go after some jump balls and go after some big play opportunities. So six receptions, 113 receiving yards in week eight, 73 receiving yards in week seven, and a touchdown. I'm a big fan of Terry McLaurin. I think he's a very solid wide receiver too. Moving into week nine, an even more solid flex option as we approach the week. All right, next up on the list, we've got the Green Bay Packers receivers, believe it or not. I know they felt a little hazy over the last couple of weeks. I know Alan Lazard missed week eight against Buffalo. As long as Lazard is healthy and good to go, I like him as we approach week nine. Nine, mainly because the Packers play the Detroit Lions, one of, if not the worst defense in the entire league. This should be a really good outing for the Green Bay Packers offense, who even though they lost in primetime television against the Buffalo Bills, they at least showed some fight in this offense. You know, Aaron Rodgers showed some trust in his receivers. I've liked Alan Lazard when healthy on a weekly basis in full PPR. So I like him in this matchup quite a bit. On the other hand, Romeo Dobbs really showed, you know, some productivity in this game as well. Had a nice catch in the end zone off a really nice pass from Aaron Rodgers. I think, you know, after the tough week seven where there was some buzz, like, you know, maybe Romeo is not going to be a part of his offense or whatever, the way Aaron Rodgers was talking about receivers and opportunities. You know, Dobbs really bounced back in week eight nicely. Seven targets, four receptions, 62 receiving yards, and the touchdown. So I do think there's a good possibility that Dobbs is once again targeted, you know, six or seven times in this matchup against the Lions and makes the most of it here in week nine. All right, next up on the list, we've got Christian Kirk, who I know a lot of you guys have lost some confidence in after week eight. But I told you guys, you know, even if Kirk doesn't line up, against Pat Sertain because he lines up out of the slot. It's still going to be a really tough matchup. This Denver Broncos unit is just good against opposing wide receivers, but Kirk is still a top 15 fantasy wide receiver in full PPR, even after scoring just seven points in week eight. And I really like this matchup against the Raiders in week nine. This Raiders defense does not look good. They just got blown out by the Saints, okay? I mean, they are just allowing for really good opportunities at a lot of different positions, but definitely in terms of all offensive positions from a fantasy 
perspective. So I think that Kirk and the Jaguars will bounce back very nicely as we move into week nine. All right, last on the list, we've got Rondell Moore, who I know for a lot of you guys has felt kind of boomer bust on the season. We really liked him after weeks five and six, where he had at least 10 fantasy points with a ceiling of 13.1 fancy points and he really disappointed us in week seven with just 4.1 fancy points then he went absolutely crazy in week eight against minnesota 23.4 fantasy points 92 receiving yards off of seven receptions and a touchdown listen the seahawks defense is not you know they're not garbage they're not awful kind of like we have imprinted in our minds they have actually been playing pretty well this season but they have allowed some pretty damn good game scripts overall. I like this matchup overall between the Cardinals and the Seahawks from a fantasy perspective as we move in to week nine. I think that Rondell Moore should get a lot of opportunities in this game alongside DeAndre Hopkins. So I think that Moore could be in line for a good stat line. I think he's a very solid flex as we move in to week nine. And that'll do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the content today, be sure to hit that like button on the way out. Hit that subscribe button, of course, if you are new to the channel. Please feel free to drop any comments, questions, concerns pertaining to the 2022 fantasy football season down below. I know on a weekly basis, I usually do starts and sits for every position, every matchup. But here in midseason, I've been feeling a little bit burnt out. So going a little bit lighter this week on the content so let me know what you guys thought of this format and of course if you guys have questions on receivers that you didn't see listed today those tougher decisions you're trying to make as we move into week nine please let me know i'd be happy to help you guys set your rosters and be sure to look out for our next fancy q a live stream we would love to have you there with that i'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening and remember you saw it here on the catch